the idea of that you can actually take this off and refit it, I think is pretty important. Yeah, I think yeah. that's amazing because that never even occurred to me. Yeah, it's just such a nice option. If you're going to do that, I do suggest maybe cutting out the armholes and not doing the arm maybe do the arms separately, just because that can impede some of the motion around the body. Right. You know, you might have to snip into the neck. You might have to go around a little bit more. When you're ready for that, you want some cardboard or gorilla board or some, or like um, if you can find some of those um, signs that people have sticking on people's lawns for political candidates, <laughs> that stuff works. It's real sturdy. You want help for this part, by the way. You want to sort of shape the form around onto the base and get a basic trace around the bottom. But you want to kind of make sure, like, are you wider from side to side or from front to back? Right. You know, so you want to kind of shape it generally. Sometimes I will do that on a piece of paper first and make a pattern, even it up by folding that piece in half and then trimming it around to make sure it's even, and then use that as a pattern for whatever the final piece is. Um, a couple of layers of flattened cardboard box work really well. Um, for Jillian's, we used a cardboard tube, a heavy duty fabric tube as the base that she is going to slide that over a mic stand. Um, for Libby's, what we did is she had a lamp post like that she'd taken all the electrics out of, like a torchier type lamp that she just, I think she just had it, but you can find those at thrift stores. That's a pretty good choice. Um, somebody else I know uh, used the cardboard tube and then put it in a Christmas tree stand. So there are a bunch of different things that you can use as a basis. Right. Once you've figured out what it, what it is going into the center and figure out how wide that is around and maybe trace around that so that you can cut a hole into the center of that base. Right. So it can slide over. Um, then you want to tape that to the base of your duct tape form. And you definitely want help for that because it's real hard to hold that yourself. So front, back, sides, and then kind of work your way around. So you've got a solid base. Tape it all the way around like because we're going to be stuffing this. Then you want to feed it with that hole over the tube, whatever it is you're going to be using to mount this on. Then figure out what the height is. So you can put that down on something and hold it up to you and figure out if are the hips where your hips are, the shoulders where your shoulders are, hold that in position. Mark that on the tube. And then what we did for both you and for um, Libby's is that we wrapped cardboard strips around really securely and tightened yeah. to the pole, right below where you wanted to put that, where the stopping point is. And so you're making it thick enough so it won't go through. So you created a stopper. Yeah. But then once it's yeah, in there, what you do is stuff it and the stuff it from all the sides and stuff it aggressively. Like you really want to get all the way in there. This isn't a light one. You want to really get it full. Um, and I've used pillows, but I also use plastic bags and I've used bubble pack and the stuff that was around like my produce box. There you go. Yeah, she did it in one color and then we did the red as that's the secondary thing that we did to fix it. But there's two layers of cardboard. The stopper at the yeah. bottom. Right. Stopper. Right? Then that's stopper. My hand. And then from there, it's stuffing on all the sides and really just aggressively stuffing in there. And you're leaving both the armholes and the neck hole open. So you know, mm -hmm. keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. When you get up to the top, you can actually measure around your neck and make a strip of cardboard that's your neck size. Right. Tape that together, put that on, and tape it to the form, and then continue to stuff, right? And you can do like a capper, like a little oval shape or whatever on top of it. So cut out a piece of cardboard with a hole for the tube, whatever it is you're feeding it over and trace around the neck, cut that out and that will be the cap. You can do something like putting in a cardboard base into the armhole or to the base of the arm, depending on what it is you've got, uh, but leave those maybe till the last and stuff it in between there as much as you can. <laughs> because you don't want anything collapsing on you, right? 
Right. The other thing you want to do while you're stuffing it is you want to look at it and say, okay, is that my body? You know, because sometimes you'll get too much stuffing on one side or it's just kind of leaning. So try to keep it as centered as you can. And then after that, um, you might, once it's really stuffed and set, you might want to do another layer of tape just to smooth off any of the bumps. And then I will usually fit a shirt over it, like a heavy duty t-shirt or something like that. Um, and you, you might even want a second layer. That's up to you. But, and then pin it so it fits it really nice and smooth um, because that way you can pin to the fabric and not into the duct tape. I've got an adjustable form, one of those ones with the- That's know, actually a really good base. That's a really good base. So you can put that in and, yeah. and stuff in between because like what I was saying in the video, those spaces in between on the adjustable forms are misery, you know? Yeah. And, well, and the thing like- it You can't pin into it. Approximate my shape. No, it's all. not even kind of your shape. It's, it's yeah. like, huh? You so know, this way you can add, you know, where the belly actually is, where, yeah. where the, the shapes are, what your shoulders do, what the back of your neck does, you know, right. and it's really just very nice. But using one of those inexpensive adjustable forms as a base is actually a really good idea because it's already got the stand. Yeah. And then you can stuff in, you could use those holes as, as a way to get your stuffing in, you know, it's just figuring that out in and around. But um, clean plastic waste is actually a great source. Um, this girl, behind me. This is done with coconut milk containers and cartons and a whole bunch of other um, waxy paper and heavy duty paper that's just taped into position. So you can really shape pretty smoothly. You can do an awful lot. And the better and smoother you shape the base, the easier it is to work with later. But if you do want to later on, you can always untape the bases and the cardboard and take out the stuffing and try this on again. If you've changed size or, you know, gravity works <laughs> and things shift because that, that happens Yes. as, as we grow and get and are lucky enough to be old enough, <laughs> but it's a, it's a pretty great technique. Um, it's not the lightest weight thing, but it's not bad. Like, yeah, it's something that just always appealed to me because one, I am like so different than patterns and, and two, because I'm usually alone. Yeah. And like you said, it's really hard to pin your, pin yourself in the back. Like you can do your sides, my... but your back, you're like. Yeah. I have stabbed myself. So <laughs> yeah. It's and ridiculous. Like, I know that that's going to happen. So it's just yeah. like, okay. Ow. Yes. Fine. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, and it's great to have that. It's great to have it to alter your own clothes. It's yeah. really good to drape and create a custom thing and just, or just to fix something and look at it like, oh, that's what it looks like. Um, what else would I like it to do? Maybe right. if I can play and add something else. So Christine, if you were trying to come up with the designs, you can put it on and decide where to put those ruffles. <laughs> I know. No, but it would be fun though, because that way you can actually have it and play with it and pin it on and test it, see, go back, look at it. You know, it's nice to have that kind of set of distance rather than trying it on and off your own body. You still want to yeah. do that, but it's a really good way with every form that I've worked with, every dress form that I've worked with professionally, unless it was a 3D body scan, I've had to pad it. And 3D body scans have their own problems because they're like, it's a expander foam inside of them. So they're solid, so they don't squish. So <laughs> putting things on them is nightmarish because all the superhero stuff is like skin tight. Right. <laughs> like trying to put gloves on things, like, uh, <laughs> it's just awful. One of the biggest things I have with forms is that they don't have butts. What is with that? <laughs> They have no bottoms. I'm like, who who are these people without bottoms? <laughs> yeah, who has no ass like this? <laughs> I know people who are kind of flat, but but that's all of them. <laughs> yeah, I worked with the LA Opera for many years, and so speaking about padding up forms. Yeah, 
Yeah. So it's helpful to have something closer to the size, but you know, a 60 inch waist is quite a bit. And figuring out where everything is proportioned on them, the best you're doing when you're padding, even with a good set of measurements is you're guessing. So doing it on the body helps.